Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to take a look at an experiment that I remember from middle school. Our teacher took a pickle jar and filled it partially with water, put a loose plastic cap above it, and then flipped it over. And miraculously, the water stayed in the pickle jar, even though there was no lid screwed on, simply by the force of the air pressure around it. Now, I thought that was a pretty neat experiment, and I understood it. Apparently, Anthony Riley, or Sleeping Warrior, thinks it's a pretty neat experiment, too. The only difference is, is he didn't quite understand it as I did when I was 12. Let's have a look. where it gets a little bit sciencey. If we could manipulate that pocket of air at the top of the, uh, the glass bell jar and change the density of it, we know that density is mass over volume. We can't change the volume without adding more or removing water. But if we could inject more mass into that volume, we could change the density of the pocket of air at the top of the glass bell jar. Now, Anthony, let's have a quick teaching moment here and see whether or not maybe we can figure this out. So what we have is we have a pickle jar, which has an open mouth, and then it's got some volume down here. And we're going to fill that up with some water. Now, in this area right here, we have at atmospheric air at atmospheric pressure. So if we put a plastic lid on top of that just loosely and then flip it over we end up with this we have our jar we've got a plastic lid on it it's partially filled with water and it has some air in here now here's the part I think that you're a little bit confused about so let's see if we can help you out. We have something called gravity that is providing a downward acceleration and it is pulling on the water in that jar, trying to pull it down. However, we do have a, uh, a pocket of air up here on top and as that water is pulled down, the pressure in that pocket of air decreases. And as a result of that, our atmospheric pressure out here presses on this lid and holds it on because the pressure inside up here is less than the pressure down here. And that is how the lid is held on. Now, if you were to introduce bubbles or crack the lid of this jar a little bit, atmospheric pressure would push air into that system. And when you do that, it will come up to the top here and equalize with this lower pressure air on top. And as a result, the water will simply fall out, pushing right past that loose plastic lid. If we could then change the force, which is the differential between the pressure at the top, the density at the top. You know, Anthony, you got it right the first time. It's kind of tough when you can't keep your story straight. You were correct. If we can change the pressure in that air pocket above the water, we can make a difference. It has nothing to do with density. If we could change that density, then we should be able to make this water fall into the container underneath. The force, the upwards pulling force, which is like a vacuum. It's not quite a vacuum, but we could do that. Let's do some science. Well, yes, Anthony, let's do some science. Now, part of doing science is figuring out what's going on and having an adequate hypothesis. Now, in this case, there's no upward pulling force from the vacuum. Vacuums don't pull. Higher areas of pressure push into vacuums. And we've already gone over that many times. I don't understand why we have to do it again. Now, the atmospheric pressure is higher than the pressure in the jar because gravity is pulling on that water and stretching out the little air gap that's up on top. That's causing a lower pressure in that jar compared to atmospheric pressure. And the pressure of the atmosphere is pushing into that relative vacuum. 
That's what's holding the cap on the jar right now. Okay. So the hypothesis would be relative density appears to be a force. We can make things move by changing the density because density is a force. The independent variable would be the pocket of air at the top of the bell housing or the bell jar. We're going to change the density of that. The dependent variable, the effect, would be the forces are equalized and do not remain in a state of disequilibrium. They remain or they become a state of equilibrium. And then there's nothing holding the water in the bell jar. Okay, so let me make sure I get this straight. You're saying your independent variable is the mass of the pocket of air over the volume of the pocket of air. And by introducing more air to it, you're going to increase that mass somehow. So that's great. So you, of course, measured the mass of air that you're introducing. You're finding out exactly how much you need to do, right? You're doing some measurement of the density of the water or the density of the air because you're testing your independent variable here, right? Whereas I can prove very easily that atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure in that pocket of air by just cracking, cracking the cover a little bit or introducing some air bubbles, just opening up a tube to allow air bubbles to go in there because atmospheric pressure, if it's higher than what's in there, will, will cause bubbling, all right? You didn't do that, did you, Anthony? The idea is the weight of the water is going to pull against the pocket of air and it's going to force a disequilibrium. Anthony, are you getting this? You understand now. Gravity is pulling the water down. That creates a vacuum at the top of the tube. And air pressure pushes the water back up because it's higher pressure than the vacuum at the top of the pickle jar. Well done, sir. Well done. So we're using the weight of the water to create like almost like a vacuum. I know it's not really a vacuum, but it's not far off. And the tube's purpose is to be able to inject our increase of mass into the pocket of air at the top. And because we know it's in a like a vacuum environment, a suction environment, we know that it's going to cause air to go in through the tube, which will in turn increase the density of the um, the pocket of air at the top of the tube, at the top of the bell housing. And because density equals mass over volume, the volume isn't going to change, but the mass of the volume will. You know, Anthony, this is a good time for a teaching moment on scientific insight. You keep referring to terms like atmospheric pressure and vacuum. You understand that this is a pressure issue, but you're trying to shoehorn it into density because that fits your narrative. That's unfortunate. Um, if you were to look at this as to what's actually occurring, you had a pocket of air in the top of that pickle jar. It had a certain volume and it was at full atmospheric pressure. You covered it, you inverted the pickle jar. The water's weight, which is mass times gravity, pulled down on that volume of air at the top of the pickle jar now and increased the volume without increasing the amount of air in it. Now, here's the ideal gas law. We started off with a volume of air at atmospheric pressure, and we ended up with a greater volume of air. In order to balance the equation, the pressure has to go down. That's why that pressure decreased up there, and that's why when you connect a tube to it and expose the end of that tube to atmospheric pressure, bubbles will go through the tube up to that pocket of air. It will equalize and the water will fall out because the pressure will be the same on both sides of the plastic lid. Just as simple as that. So we push the pin in, watch for the bubble. There's the bubble. So we know that there is air going in right now. And then as we wiggle this, the cold air goes in, changes the mass of the pocket of air, and then boom, 
the pressure differential that was holding that, that, that water to the inside of the jar has become equal. Well, very good, Anthony. And again, you recognize that it is the pressure differential. It has nothing to do with density. It is a pressure differential that held that top on the mouth of the pickle jar. And when you equalize the pressure, nothing was holding it on anymore and the weight of the water just pushed right through it. Nicely done. Unfortunately, you're trying to relate this strictly to density. This is a pressure issue. It's not a density, mass, or volume issue. You know, one thing that might help Anthony is to understand that this is the first part in a lesson on atmospheric pressure. And this is the second part right here. This is a mercury barometer. Now, what you have here is you have a, a glass tube that's closed up here on the top and open on the bottom. Now, you fill this tube up with mercury. And then what you do is you set it up and let the mercury fall down into this little jar of mercury down here. Gravity pulls down on that mercury, and since it fully filled the tube at first, what it does is it basically pulls open a little vacuum by increasing the volume up there. What stops all of the mercury from flowing out of the tube? Well, right here, you see the air pressure on the, on the, on the actual pull of mercury down here in this jar? That's pressing down on that and forcing the mercury up into the jar. And this is how a mercury barometer works. Now, with normal atmospheric air, we have 29.92 inches of mercury. And this is what it comes from. That's how far the atmospheric pressure will push the mercury up into the tube with a vacuum at the top. So the amount of pressure coming out of the atmosphere pressing on that bath of mercury is really rather significant. The first indication that we have of that is that it can keep a plastic lid on a pickle jar and keep water in the pickle jar. This is the next part of the lesson right here. If you need some help with this, contact me and I'll explain it to you in detail. Thank you very much for the entertainment. Folks, stay in school. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Through my brain getting real sore